Good afternoon. Welcome back with Lipa, the Xavier's magazine. And I'm Asuka Wefora, and today we're here with the uh, women's wear and male's wear designer, Maurice Whittingham. Hi, good afternoon. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much for having us. I'm very excited about this interview, and so let's get on with it. Okay, so Maurice, if you could describe yourself with only three words, which words would they be? Okay, my first one would be determined. Um, it's mainly because I'm a determined guy, I'm a focused person. Uh, you get so many obstacles put in front of you, especially with the, the clothing industry, the fashion industry, that it's easy just to go, oh, I've had enough. And I've always wanted to create. I've always been a creative person. I've always, whether it, from when I was a teenager, altering trousers, clothes to, to be a little individual. Um, and all the, all the obstacles I still have now, trying to get myself across to people, trying to show people who I am and what I'm about, and what my clothes are about, mainly. Um, it's, a, it's, a hard, it's a hard slog, it is. but my determination will make me push through. I'm not, I'm not stopping. I know what I need to, to do to achieve my goals in life. And we're really glad that you're not stopping because uh, from what I've seen and from what the public is going to see from design, I'm pretty sure they're all going to think, especially the male audience. Thank you. I'm glad he's not stopping and thank he's you. pushing through, so thank you very much. Next one? Uh, creative. The reason why creative, um, I'm always creating something. Uh, I don't really watch TV as such. Um, I prefer to to use my creative skills, not just with clothing. If I, sometimes I fancy making something out of soft furniture, I've made jewelry out of leather if I'm just sitting here bored, just to see what I can produce, um, to see if it works, to see if it can work with my collection as well. Um, and I love just being creative within any aspects, with food as well. It's, it's nice to experiment with different foods because you don't experiment you don't know that's true and that's something we will like especially here in the Xavier magazine we like all the scaffolding so that's a very interesting point okay that's good Christian. and thirdly thirdly I'm a romantic oh there's something <laughs> in your cross I'm here. a romantic okay. um, I follow my heart and I do what my heart tells me to do uh, obviously sometimes you can have conflict between the heart and the head um, but nine times out of ten my heart rules my head and I just go with the flow and what what the passion drives me you know from, from a romantic side I just love soft things gentle things um, beautiful things I love I love to see the beauty of the world as much as I can I mean I think so we have determination creativity and romance this is the mixture for your success yeah. and it's quite good there's a few so more I could add in there if you wanted to but <laughs> <laughs> anybody who knows me would say you <laughs> no, it's, no, it's, cool. I feel like it's actually a very good mixture because everything came out quite well, so yeah, that's to be noted. Okay, cool. So, could you tell me uh, when it all started? When did you notice that this was the, the career, the road that you wanted to take? This, this is it, I'm going to design clothes. Okay, that's, that's more from when I was a child. And it's, I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't say to you, I knew that I wanted to design clothes, but what I'd say is that my mom is extremely good. I'm self-taught, but my mom kind of, I still go and see my mom now when I'm making something. Mom, is the fit of this right? So on and so forth. She, she used to guide me on how to do certain things. Um, and I was speaking with my brother the other day about how we used to dress as kids. We were all individual. So if I, a uh, little story I can tell you, when I was, when I was at school, um, junior school, bell bottoms were out, side pockets, high waistbands. And I remember going into school and this, one of the kids had on a pair of bell bottoms, 19 inch bottoms, high waist, 20 buttons. And I went home and I said to my mum, Mum, there's a guy at school he's wearing. Two days later, 22 inch bell bottoms, bigger side pockets, bigger waistband. And it kind of... I suppose that kind of inspired me to like things that were individual and personal um, and how everybody can, you can look different on how you, you feel with yourself as a person. You don't need to follow the crowd, you can, you can be an individual. 
And then as I got older, um, I always kind of delved into making clothes and I've always made clothes for my friends or anyone that I was seeing at the time or anything like that. I'd always create and produce something. And I suppose last, of the last year and a half, two years, um, I've decided that, right, I need to follow my dream. Um, I'm very flexible with my nine to five, so I work nine to five. And my brother's very flexible with me because I work with my brother, but I needed to, I needed to express what was in my heart yes. and the time felt, felt right. Okay. And it's, it, the, the time was about two years ago. I designed the coat. I wore this coat out, a winter coat, and I've, I got so much recognition from it that I was, at first I was just going to design a series of men's coats for winter. Just thought, like, don't, don't pressure yourself too much. Just do what you think you're capable of. And then as time went on, it just went into everything from flip-flops to bags to everything yeah, yeah. and I just I just design everything yeah that's cool oh my god this is really nice so you, you basically you didn't accept that okay so that guy had this type of style okay that that's it you, you just you went for yourself I yeah, can do I, well, it, was, it, it was when we used to speak about it as kids and it's one of it was it was strange because I, I spoke to my brother yesterday about this question and he, he said to me, God, do you remember when mum made us them green tank tops in the 70s? And, we had, and I was like, yeah, that's what I wore with my chocolate brown bell bottoms that mum made me. And that, all of my family can make clothes, all of my brothers sew, not to the extent that I can sew, mm -hmm. but all of my brothers can, that if, if they need to alter something, there's not, there's not a problem. They're all quite handy on the sewing machine. So you, you would say also your family was also a nice environment and back Yeah, 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 yeah. My, my, my mum basically made everything that we wore up to a certain point. So it always has. Um, I could always walk down the road and feel a bit different, even though at the time I didn't know it. But as I've now grown older to look back, I, I can probably say there were the early footsteps of how I'm doing what I'm doing now. So if there were, if there can be and not be, it's up to you, is there anything that you would willing to change or compromise in what you're doing? You know, there are a lot of people that change their, their maybe some thoughts or technique in order to get to the, to maybe the, the big catwalk or the big day, but uh, I've noticed lately actually there are some things that people would absolutely not compromise with, but do you have anything that you would compromise with or something that you would never change? My mind's always open to new ideas. That's what I will. That's what I would say. But if my heart didn't take to whichever direction I was going, it would, it would be difficult because I follow my heart and my passions within my heart. So, <clears throat> and it's not necessarily about finances. Um, the success that I need to have first and foremost is, is the success within me. That's what I find more importantly. If I'm happy within myself, I can then express what's inside to everybody and hopefully they'll like what I've got inside. So I wouldn't compromise on certain things but obviously there's things that I'd, I'd try to move to see if I could get somewhere else. But I've got a vision in my head of how I want to be and how I think my clothes should be. I don't want to. I don't want to sell out. If that's the right word, to, if, that, if that's the right word to use, I don't want to sell out. I want to. I want to be me. Yes. I want to be Marie Switzerland. Exactly. I was about to say you want to be Marie Switzerland, and of yeah. course, so you have to. Definitely, so, obviously, you cannot compromise. Yeah, I can't compromise. I, I'm. I'm stubborn. One of the questions of the three that you asked me, I could have put stubborn in because I, I, I have a view on something, and I'd like. I, I like to carry it through, and that's that's the way I see it. Which is probably goes back into determination. determination yeah, yeah, yeah. Part, part you can. I uh, was look. You can. There's there's many paths that you can take in life. It just depends which path you want to take yes. and which path suits you. And at the moment, it feels like I'm. I've chosen the right path, which is work by myself for now. Um, so then, if anything that progresses, that's due to me. If anything doesn't go right, it's also due to me. So I, I couldn't blame anybody apart from myself, whichever way it goes. So if we had to decide or think about something that you reference to for your uh, designs and your collections, is there anything or anybody or any, what, what do you take reference to, if any, anything else? 
I look at texture, um, colours are really important to me. Um, I don't really follow anybody. Um, as I said, I follow what I feel is right structurally. Some people will look and think it's right, some will think it's not right, that's life. I can't, you know. So I just produce what I feel. The way when I look at a man or a woman, I think, okay, let's work on proportions first and shape. Let's make sure that the basics are in place and then we'll detail. I've seen a lot of designers who will design but not really work out proportions and for me proportions is paramount. Proportion and shape is paramount to how a garment comes out well. Um, I also believe you can have fantastic fabric if your proportions aren't right it's not going to work but you can have decent fabric and if your proportions are right you can get away with it. So that's my balance on, on that but I, to be fair, I really like Rick Owens. I think his, his, his work's fantastic. He's got, a, he's got a very edgy look to his work. Um, very stylish, it's, it's wearable. And it's not saying that I look at his and, and copy his work. What I would say is that, because he's, when I was reading his bio, it says that he's this gothic kind of, my, my clothes, I want you to wear be able to wear any time, in any occasion. So, if you're going to a wedding and you wore one of my garments, not probably one of the coats, but one of the, the suits that I make, you'd, you'd stand out because you'd look a bit different, but you wouldn't feel that everyone's pointing at you. If you, was, if you was going somewhere with your partner on a Saturday afternoon, girls normally dress elegantly, even if they're going into town. Guys, jeans, jacket, t-shirt. That should change. Guys, you can put on clothes, and feel smart that if, you, <clears throat> if the day progresses and you don't come home, you can continue the day by going for a nice meal with your, with your partner, still looking as elegant as your partner, and carry on the whole day as one instead of going, hold up a minute, I need to go home and get changed. People always say to me, Morris, why do you dress? What for? Because I like dressing. I like to look nice. No, no, no debate in that. That is actually <laughs> my you. very good answer. And, and I will have a lot of guys think about that as well because it's true, there should be some balance. We always dress a lot, but even a well-dressed up guy is actually refreshing to the eyes. Like, yeah, it is. You see that, it's like, okay, he puts so actually, look at that. It's, it's, nice, it's, it's nice to, to see guys putting effort yes. into how they look, how they're groomed, um, how the, the combination of, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, some of my friends, their partners dress them. I, I, I'm, I, couldn't, I couldn't live with that. <laughs> but it, it just depends how much you love clothes and how much you don't. And it's, it's, it's simple, everyone's got their own priorities in life. And clothes is one of mine. It's a, it's a big priority for me. It also depends on the environment as well. Yeah, and yeah, of course. from a culture where male or female, they all put very much effort in, you know, Italy, the way they look, yeah. Italy, you know, like my brother would never leave the house if he's not on point with everything yeah, yeah. and all the day. Yeah. So maybe you're going to bring this type of culture around here yeah, as that, well. That would, be, that would be nice. That would be great, that yes. Be nice. And then, I mean, when we'll see a collection later, I'm pretty sure. That, yeah. Well, maybe I can start where it's smart, yeah. right? So that'll be cool. Right? Good. So, I mean, this is the Xavier magazine, mm -hmm. and uh, we have, as you know, you saw our magazine focuses on fashion, but we try to tie it on with cuisines and yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. So, in this, uh, the Xavier Coppolin, we were wondering for, you can pick a collection if you want, for not all of you, because it might be hard, as yeah, we yeah, saw, yeah. he's very into cooking. So, if for the, maybe say the last collection, it, is there any cuisine or an, an, a traveling the, a place in the world that you can couple with your designs and collection? Okay, first of all, I'd say I don't, I don't want anybody to put me in a box yeah. and say right. this is where your clothes are. So where I am is I love the beauty of the world. Yeah. I haven't seen enough of the world. I've seen certain places. I've, I've, I've done a decent amount of traveling. Yeah. Um, would I couple my clothes with anywhere in the world? No, because I want my clothes to be versatile for all of them. And, and that's, the way, that's the way I look at it. It's good, it's okay? good. My, food wise, um, I love Thai food. I love Caribbean food. I love French food. I've been blessed to have 
two women in my life who are great cooks. One is my mother and one was my ex-wife, a French woman, great cook. Um, and I love food and I love to experiment because food is about experimentation. It is. And if you don't experiment, then how do you know? How do you know what suits your palate? That's true. So it's good. So it's basically, it's, it's, it's quite, it's interesting because so it, I get your feeling, they'll probably get the feeling as well that when you, you wear this well, it's more about like personalizing yourself. You take it and make it yours. When, you, when you put on a garment of mine, I want you to have a sense of an occasion. That's the way I feel. You feel a bit mysterious, um, smart, elegant, um, to know that you could walk into somewhere and you potentially know that people are going to look at you. Not the whole crowd of people, because then people can be a bit scared of that. But you'll, you'll more than likely get noticed because of the little detail. I try not to go OTT. I try to have nice detail, little details. It is all about the details. It is all about the details. I agree. I agree. I, I feel like, especially now, where, as I was mentioning before, it's so easy to just travel from one place to another, just picking a plane. It's not like in the 50s where you have to send a letter, you stay in your own little country forever. Mm -hmm. Like this whole idea of being global is, is I appreciate that, and it's very good. Yeah, yeah I, I just think that modern transport, airplanes take you everywhere so quickly. Um, so I try not to segregate, even though we have different, I mean, simple thing is, is climate. One part of the world is absolutely steaming hot yeah. and the other side is freezing cold. Yes. But we try, to, we try to mix them because we can get from one place to the other pretty quick. Yeah, exactly. Pretty quickly. So if you, you can be versatile with your clothes. So I'd like to say that my, my clothes are open for everybody. Uh, if you could tell the public and uh, look at them, any message, something that you would like them to take from everything, something you really would want to tell them? Obviously, I'd like them to you all to my website will be out on the 28th of August for pre-bookings uh, for you guys to have a look through I hope you enjoy what you see it's mariesweetinghamcouture.com um, from a personal point of view uh, anybody who I believe that you should always follow your heart follow your dreams it's essential to life um, you want no regrets out of life we want to live and be happy um, and don't be afraid to express yourself be an individual. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, that's a very good message. Thank you so much, Maurice. No problem at all. And um, next, we will see some of his collection. Maurice will explain to us um, a couple, a few of his um, garments that he drawn and he's had. And so he will tell us in detail what the clothes represent and how he did and anything else that he wants to know about the clothes. No problem so, at all. We'll see you in the day. So we're back here with Maurice Whittingham and he's going to show us some of his collection, particularly two garments, one for men and one for women. So the first one is a nice um, men outfit, which Maurice is going to introduce us. Okay, I haven't named him as yet, <laughs> but I will in time. Um, inspiration, it's military, it's uh, futuristic military. Um, it's got wool neck and wool cuffs. Leather detail, obviously, as you can see, single potty, pocket and it's offset to one side. Okay, I try to put two-way zips in all of my clothes because it gives you a different look. It gives you options and I like options in, in the clothes that I wear. Um, so, obviously, you can wear it straight or if you've ate a bit, you can, uh, you can pull it up to here. Then you can drop it like so and wear it with just the neck done up. It's a nice you walk in this will then open up and show the detail of what you're wearing underneath okay I'll click the neck it's pretty simple and underneath I'm going to take this off you have you have the waistcoat again as you can tell I do like to work with a bit of leather for detail um, but I don't like to go OTT just little strips of leather I think brightens it up gives it a bit of depth um, offset, offset with a slight curvature on the front. Um, leather details on the welt pockets, on the welts. Um, if this one's just a plain back waistcoat, simple traditional cut, but I, if I can turn this around a sec, 
I sculpt the back of the waistcoats to give you more definition. If you, um, when you sculpt the back like that, the man's body will portray a more, more of a physique. Okay? So emphasizes figure. Yeah, yeah, emphasizes the shape. Even if you don't have necessarily the best shape in the world, that will give you. That's a good point. Yes, that helps okay, right there. That helps. Okay, trousers. I wanted to do something a bit funky, change it up a bit. Um, so I don't like this skirt effect. I'm not the first and I won't be the last to do it, but I like it. Um, gladiators, Romans, men, powerful men used to wear skirts way back when. So guys who are running away from it, don't be scared, get in touch with your femininity, it's not a problem. <laughs> it's not a problem. Um, the shirt, uh, pleated cuffs and pleated collars. Um, very technical, hard to do, but it gives a great effect to shirts. Shirts normally come across normal collars, normal cuffs. I wanted to do something simple, but wearable, something quite classic. Um, and I think I've achieved it with this. Again, and I work a lot with shape, proportions, how it fits, the end result. Um, if the shirt's too big on a guy with a good physique, there's no, for me, there's no point. What's the point in somebody working so hard to get their, their torso looking a certain shape and you just put a bag on them. Yes. Let's, let's, let's embrace the man's body. Um, again, no, I don't need to undo that really. The trousers, again I put this round just to give it more detail, layers. I like the layer effect and I think it's something that you could wear for different occasions and that's what I'm looking for. Clothes that you can wear for different, different occasions. Maybe there's somebody who might want to put a pair of Converse on uh, and, and do it that way. Someone wants to put a pair of shoes on. I've also made the matching tie which has pleats in it so you could you could put a tie on if you want. It's, it's, I like my outfits to be versatile. And it's got a single, single pocket at the back. Oh, that's interesting. That's the first time I've seen a potato, actually. That's okay. It's, men's trousers are so hard to, to make look unusual. So I thought, okay, <laughs> I went running. That's where the, that's where the eye, my, jogging, my jogging trousers. I thought that's a nice idea. You get, concept, you get ideas from anywhere. Anything you can, you can look at, you can probably get an idea out of. It just depends how you want to incorporate it into your wear. Okay. And I use the pocket there. That's a very good detail. Okay. It's quite original. Thank you very much. Next, we're going to talk about the woman garment, which is going to explain to us. Okay, this is one of my women's wear. Um, it's kind of classic, futuristic. That's the way I've been told my work is, so that's, that's a great point. Um, again, as you can tell from the last one, I do like to use leather detail. It's a, it's a simple shape, just well proportioned. Um, two ways if again. Um, and this is more like, um, this is a, a coat dress. Uh, we don't really need the big winter coats because everywhere, when you get to a certain age, you travel everywhere in car and you step out of the car and you walk to a bar or a restaurant, which is 50 feet away, nine times out of 10. You come out of a taxi and you go straight into somewhere. So I was thinking that you don't necessarily need a big heavy coat that you have to take off. Let's make the whole outfit is something that you step out of the car, walk into a bar or a restaurant, and you can stay there all night, That's just the same, fine. yeah, without playing about. Hence, um, I'm gonna quickly turn to the back. Hence, we've got open back, so it keeps it nice and, and feminine. Uh, yeah, that's a nice one. You can also, um, if you wanted to, you could turn the collars up. The higher you can go on the collars, you can go right up to there to give you a bit of detail. Um, Again, with the zip, you can zip down, it just depends how you want to wear it. The skirt is again, simple pencil skirt, cut with the same detail, A-line pencil skirt, um, sits on the hips, uh, so you can show, if you zip it up to a certain length, if you're not wearing anything underneath apart from this, you can show a bit of your stomach if you're, if you're that confident. But it's a nice, simple ladies wear. I think this will strike a chord with the ladies definitely and I really like the back, that was a nice surprise. Well, it, it's, it's nice because I, I think you can, there's different occasions you can wear it for. 
and that's the kind of market that I'm looking at. A, a, so something you can wear all the time for any occasion and still feel special. This is it, look at this. So we're definitely looking forward to seeing this on the market quite soon and I'm pretty sure it's going to be there so make sure to look around for Morris Whittingham and I'll be wearing this coat next maybe. Who knows, yes? yes? It's August the 28th with uh, Maurice Whittingham Couture. Um, you can have a look on the website. You might be provisionally, you can have a look. Send me some emails, place your orders, and we can go from there. Thank you very much. There you go. Thank you for watching. See you next time.